Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. Welcome to this tutorial, which is going to be about a very simple AI tool called Deep Artifacts AI, which helps you transform very normal looking portraits into something which looks like a painting with some different effects. And this can be done with literally a single click. So this is uh, not really going to be a complex workflow, a very simple tool to use. But these days I'm doing a lot of experiments with AI and I just thought I'll make this video to show you. So you can go to Google, you can type in Deep Art Effects AI or you can directly go on this website which I have given uh, in the description. The link will be given and you can see that it uses artificial intelligence. And one of the different things about this software is that when you do click on Try Now, for the PC version, even though they have a mobile app, but I'm going to be showing you the PC version, it actually is a downloadable software. So you get the setup file, you install the software, you know, pretty old school that way, because most of these AI software these days, as if you've been following my videos, are mainly web-based. So this is different. And once you have this software installed on your computer, it's going to look uh, something like this. So the first thing it's going to ask you when you do open the software is to enter your product key. So this is we're going to be using the free version of the software, so we don't have the product key. Uh, key. You can just hit this button which says try it for free and just click here and we're going to be uploading that practice image. So let's do that. The link to that image is also given in the description, so you'll be able to download that and follow along. All right, so we've got the image here. Let me just hit this button to maximize and get it to full screen. And like I said, it's a very easy software to use. You just get these filters with the, these different types of filters with different names and the moment we click on that is basically going to apply that effect on this image. So nothing too great about it, but a couple of things that you have to know uh, on these options on the right here, the important part here is that first of all, you can hit cut image in case you want to crop. So that's basically uh, a different name for cropping. Level of detail is important because we can on the free version, we can either use thumbnail, which is going to make it very small. So there'll be no point right now by default is set to low. This is how big your image will be when you actually save it by going to file. I'll show that later, but you're exactly looking at that size. So again, not too great, but later on towards the end of the tutorial, I'm actually going to be showing you that you can upscale these images using a free software also, because here, if you were, if you were to click on high, very high, any of these higher resolution photos, what happens is it's going to, so I've clicked on high and it'll just render this and it's basically going to increase the resolution here, use the higher resolution photograph. And then when you apply these effects, like let me just show you right now, even though we'll talk about the effects and which ones are good later on, but let's say right now, just hit fantasy. It starts to render this and it takes more time, the more the quality here is, okay? Otherwise on the low, it just does it instantly. But the main problem here is that once you once it does apply the effect, you get this with the watermark. So if you download this, it's going to be with the watermark. So there's really no point with that of that. So we can just go back to the low setting. So that's about uh, the things here. In the middle, we have some options here. Here, you can only apply these art based filters, because if you were to click on any other types of filters, it's just going to ask you to sign up for the pro plan. There are some options here. Mainly the important slider here is the intensity slider. So anytime you use any of these effects, you can move around the intensity slider to just tone it down or use it at its full intensity. Things like these are pretty common contrast brightness. That's going to have a corresponding effect. Uh, blur is just going to blur the photo. Sharpen is going to sharpen the photo. And bokeh, if it does notice the background, though it doesn't always do a good job, if it's Able to pick out the background from the photo, you can just increase the uh, bokeh slider to just add a blur to the background. So you can do that also. Uh, in these options, this option is very important, original colors, because you're gonna find out once we do apply these effects, it sometimes really changes all the colors. So if you just want that effect to be applied, but not the colors to be changed, you can hit this check mark which says preserve original colors. And these options here, to be frank, they're not of any use. So we have around, if you go, on this strip, we have around 40 to 45 free effects that you can use. You can see there's so many of them. After a while, you start to see this key-like icon, and uh, that just means that these are available for the pro version. Now, out of these 40 odd ones, I'm gonna show you my top five to six, which I really like because I tried all of them. So the first one that I was really impressed was with uh, Mosaic. So we're gonna just hit that, and it just gives this really nice, look that oftentimes you see, uh, you know, on glass like material and I think it just looks really nice. So you can, if you want, you can tone it down. So you can see now it mixes it with the original. 
or you can use it to its full intensity. Now you can do something like this easily in Photoshop also. It's just that it takes more amount of work rather than just a one click job, okay? And like I said, sometimes it can change the colors. So just make, make sure that this is checked because you can see without it, it can change the colors. But when we check this, it just maintains the color. So this one was good. Similar to this was Mosaic 2. This produces a different type of effect and you can see it's applying it very fast since we are on the low resolution. This is very similar to that. Another one, probably my favorite was Epoch. So here, if you just click on this one, by the way, sometimes it can give you this box, or the window again, but it is still gonna apply the effect. So here, this gives and turns the image into a really nice painting-like look to this. And sometimes you can even try without the original colors, maybe it looks better, but yeah, that's about it. Another one that I really liked was, and something that was really different was the sketch effect. So let me just quickly find that. You can see sketch one. And as the name suggests, that's gonna basically turn it into a sketch. And for this, what I would suggest is you don't enable this option because then it doesn't look like a sketch. But without this, you can see that, yes, this does look like a sketch. So again, I have a Photoshop tutorial on my channel about turning an image into a sketch. That was way more work than this. Another one that I liked was Manga, so we can just apply this effect. Not sure if I pronounced it rightly, but yeah, I mean, you can see this, yeah, you know, preserve the colors. This gives a much more cleaner painting-like look. You can see, if you really want to turn something into a painting, this looks good. And another one was uh, Mudita. Hey, so if we just select this, this is slightly more of an aggressive painting, looks more like painted on a wooden, canvas, something like that, okay? So you can see, and like I said, you can try out, there were some other good effects also. So pretty simple software to use. And finally, when you do like something, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to file, you will just save it as a either a PNG image or a JPEG image. So you can give it uh, any sort of a name. So let's do that. So now that I have saved that image, that's gonna be exactly of the same size that you were seeing on the screen. So that's pretty much not even gonna work on most social media channels. So you definitely need to upscale it and we are not paying for deep art. So uh, one of the upscaling, free upscaling AI tools that I've been showing a lot is Upscale Media, shown it a couple of times on my channel. The only issue is right now, actually I won't be able to use it because I already upscaled two images and I upscaled it to eight times its size on the free plan. So sometimes it can just, you know, uh, tell you that right now you're out of the limit, uh, you're, you've reached the limit. So I'll have to actually wait for a day before I can use it again. So make sure that when you are using, yes, it's free, but you can only do this twice. However, if you run out of uh, the credits here, you can go to pixelcut.ai slash t.upscaler. I'll give the link in the description, I'll give the link to this also. This one, the only downside is you can only upscale it to twice on the free plan, but then there's no limit, okay? So let's do this for the one of our images. So I've taken the, the, the Mudita filter and let's just wait for this. And that's at least going to increase it to a considerable size. However, it's still not enough, right? Because the original image is like around 300 pixels uh, by something. So the original is really downscale. So I would highly suggest use upscale media because it really allows us, allows you to upscale it to eight times its size, but it's just that you'll be able to do it twice per day, which is not such a bad problem. But you can see these upscalers definitely increase the quality of the image. So again, a very simple tool to use. I'm doing a lot of experiments with different AI tools and especially AI tools like these, which are not very popular. Okay, so maybe we can incorporate something like this into a Photoshop workflow, a Lightroom workflow. I'll try to figure out ways how it, how this can actually help us in more advanced edits, I'm still working on that. But yes, if you do wanna follow my experiments with AI in the realm of photo editing, then don't forget to subscribe, give this video a like, and I will see you next time.